Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Frozen Frontier. Uh, flashback, Martha, Matava, Breaking Your Chains edition. Um, <laughs> Gotta work on that subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not really good with names. On YouTube as Martha, dot, 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 Matava, question mark, Breaking Your Chains edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really good with names. No, I neither am I. I struggle with them. I feel you. Okay. One day I would like to have like George R. R. Martin's ability to name shit. Oh, yeah. Of all the things that George R. R. Martin does well, I think the thing that was not talked about enough is his names for things are amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And his names also, for people spoilers, are Also, spoilers, part of the reason why I think season seven was a little bit shite. Think about think about all the like uninspired naming like things that happened. There was a loot train battle. That was the official name for that thing. George R. R. Martin, like if he was dead, would have been rolling in his grave. He was rolling in his like study. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, diatribe. Let's return. To <laughs> we could have a long conversation about season seven, but uh, we we'll, could. We'll do that we another day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's the next day. You are somewhat rested and recovered after your scrub down bath by the clerics again. Um, and... uh, so it's the next day, right? Um, I probably don't go to the bath. Uh, that, that night you would have had a scrub down and then the next oh, okay. day you wake up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so basically I, I wake up that morning and like, there's a, there's a, a plan that's hatching in my head, right? Like, um, and I, I get my I get my clothes on, and I I begin I, I begin like like kind of psyching myself up mentally, right? I probably do that pacing thing that you saw Yaromir do um, when he was alone for the first time. Like, this, it's how he dealt with anxiousness. Like back then, it was because he was alone and didn't have women around which was weird and it made him anxious and now it's like okay i have to like psych myself up to like have my own request um and i i like get myself worked up and i go in search of uh, mother angel uh yes you do find her when you are let out of your room and brought to the your your normal morning breakfast and everything and um you you can talk to mother angel um, I think I kind of walk up to her like very obviously nervous, like very obviously like feeling out of place. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I kind of just, uh, I, I kind of bow a little bit, maybe even like formally. Um, and I asked Mother Angel if I could speak to her um, in private. She looks up, um, kind of takes a look at the other servants in the room and quickly dismisses them with a hand wave. And as soon as they are out of the room, she says, what happened? Did the elves do something? Did they take something? I I, I shake my head. I said, not more than the, the samples that they requested. Uh, I have a request for you. Um, I, I overheard some of their conversation, and it seems that they had further tests they wished to do, uh, but did not have time. Um, I think it is possible that uh, if I went with them, we might find further answers. Uh, he, I kind of pause for a second and then like keep going and kind of charge ahead after a moment and say, we've been here for 16 years. We have delved into every book, every prophecy, every teaching of Martha. Uh, perhaps the answers do not lie there. Perhaps, uh, we will not find it in these religious texts. The elves seem to have a deep knowledge that goes beyond that, and if they have further tests, perhaps if I went with them, they would have time to do it. Uh, perhaps they would have knowledge that Martha does not. And then, like, probably, like, half supplicate myself, like, knowing I've just spoken way out of turn. seems that maybe you have become a little too comfortable. It seems that perhaps you have forgotten your place. 
Maybe we have been too kind and too gentle with you. Maybe you don't quite realize. I, I think she pauses there and I just kind of look up and I'm like, am I not key to some mystery? Perhaps is, perhaps it is best even, even if I have grown out of place to You don't think I see what you're what doing mentioned? here? Trying to leave the country, trying to escape to the elves? You are our intrigue. You are our, I'm not sure what yet, but you belong to us, Yaramir. You are not leaving Matava, not now, not ever, especially not to head off to the elven kingdoms. I think maybe a few days in a dungeon will clear your head and make you remember who you belong to. And she kind of gives a call for some of the servants and for the door guard who comes and with a, a spear in hand leads you away. Uh, leads you- uh, Probably not roughly, right? Like Yermir is less like angry at this point as he is just like dejected. Yeah, right. she's not like yanking you away, yeah. but she's she has a weapon in hand, like takes you by the elbow and leads right. you out. And it's I'm not... fairly easy to lead. I just like yeah. probably just walk out like hangdog and just dejected. Yeah. Um, you find for the first time in your life yourself in a a, a, a literal dungeon. Right. Um, it's cold, it's dark, it's very similar to that room where you were chained up, or not chained up, where you were housed with all those other men um, on your way to Valara. Uh, but this time it's, you know, cots on the ground, uh, cold stones, and not very much in the way of light. Uh, just right. like a, a small window that looks out onto the street somewhere that's like dripping with water or run off from the street, whatever run off that Yeah, whatever be. nastiness runs off the street. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for the first couple of hours, right, Yaromir probably just like, is still having this sink in, right? Like he just is feeling kind of like dejected that that this, this plan didn't work, right? And now he's in this new environment that he doesn't like and it's dark and it's cold. But after a few hours, like it's dark and it's cold and it's oppressive and his own like resentment towards um, like Chancellor Angel and these and these priestesses kind of like comes to the forefront right and like it just it just begins kind of this like boiling black like emotion in him of like okay I hate this place right this is this is literally the worst place to be in I'm I am a caged animal to be poked and prodded. I am property, and like, per, maybe he starts thinking for the first time. I'm, I'm meant for more than this, right? I have, I've been told. I've, I've basically been told I was special for my entire life, and now I'm thrown in this dungeon, right? Like he's like, I have to leave. I have to leave this place um, so that I can find out why, and like. He probably sits for the first time um, and just like for like crosses his legs and just begins kind of like clearing his mind and like meditating. Like you've seen this in in Frozen Frontier when he when he kind of casted some some kind of ritual before, uh, but maybe this is like the first time and he just like it's an exercise in clearing his mind, right? And he just leaves one thing there. And it's just this like burning desire to to leave. He needs to find a way to leave. And he just sits in the cold, despairing dark for days. Yes. Now you have a slight flicker of hope because it's um, the end of May. And you know that uh, at the beginning of June, on the longest day of the year, there's 
uh, what they call here Mother's Day. It's not the same sort of Mother's Day we have in, in the, the U.S. It's uh, like Martha's Day. It's, um, it is a celebration of life and those that produce life through parades and community gatherings in the streets. People wear costumes, masks, and they worship Loomis and Martha, Loomis being the god of light, Martha being the, the, the creator of life. Uh, mm -hmm. It is said to be good luck to be a child born or conceived on Mother's Day. It is also a day of exceptional fertility, and many attempts to produce children are made on this day. Um, so it's kind of like a big festival day, and it's kind of a big deal. And typically, Mother's Day is the day where they do a lot of, like, extra working with you in some regards, or, you know, have you in some sort of ceremonies um, as a, you know, you're, you're kind of seen as a, a boon, as a, a good luck symbol for the country. So... It, you're pretty sure they're not going to keep you imprisoned all the way through Mother's Day. And sure enough, um, two days beforehand, you are let out after being in the dungeons for two weeks uh, and brought up into the light, back into the town, back to the temple where you are cleaned off. Not a lot, you haven't seen Victoria, but you're immediately washed down, cleaned off, put back in nice robes, any sort of like bruises or markings you've had are, you know, covered up and treated to kind of remove all visual problems with you before you are presented in the traditional parade through the city streets on your little float where you're going to sit and be like, oh, yay, look, the tattooed one, yay. <laughs> um, and... This is probably like also Yaramir's birthday, right? Like this is this is probably the day he was born. So this is a... Yeah, this it's day probably that the day you're born. You don't know for certain, and or no one ever celebrates your birthday, but it's often referred to as like, oh, this is your special day. And I think there, you've always had this like assumption that you were born on this day because look at you and the way that right. they do this sort of thing. But um, to be clear, it's never been explicitly spelled out for you. I think your birthday is kind of a... Fair enough. It's been it's been hinted at at least, and like yeah. this is probably the days that I have been. This is probably the festival day that I've been allowed at times to go visit um, uh, my my mother in uh, in Yunta. Mm -hmm. Like once every three or four years, they'll allow right. you to go back on like the maybe it's um, maybe it is once every four years on like the years that are not quite as important. You know. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um so you're paraded through the city streets. How 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 last year when you were paraded through the city streets on Mother's Day, how would you have behaved? Oh, last year like this is a like Yarmir's a bit of a peacock, right? Um even, even like he's been treated as like living art right he's been he's been pampered and treated last year he would have been preening for the crowds right mm -hmm. um like look at my tattoos i sit on like he has sat on a float every year on this day like his whole life when he was a little kid it was probably weird but like he's grown to the point where like this is what i do and like i talk to the crowds and i'm I'm big and weird and I stand here and I show off my tattoos, right? Like that's probably the way he treats it is like as a performance. Right. <laughs> yup, a skinny malnourished peacock, exactly. Uh, this year, how do you behave in the parade? Um, I think everything I've done since the moment, like the cell doors were open are very like cold and perfunctory, right? Like I don't misstep a word. I don't misstep an action, but it's all just very like um, mechanical, right? It's like, this is what I am required to do. This is what I do, right? Like very formal. Um, this year I'm probably like sitting or standing on this float um, in like whatever position is required of me and just like kind of coldly being like seen right and mm. i just kind of being paraded down the street you just see this like not doing anything wrong but just like very perfunctory performance mm -hmm. okay so you go through the the whole day's parade event um at the end of it you are brought back into the temple where uh chancellor angel is 
Uh, and she gives you a bit of a smile and says, Ah, it seems like your time in the cells has cleared your head. Welcome home, Yaromir. Um, I kind of like bow formally and I say, uh, uh, Thank you, uh, uh, Mother Angel. I'm happy to be back. Good, good. Uh, why don't you take the rest of the day and rest? Uh, she points to another woman. Heather, would you please take Yarmir back to his room? Um, I kind of formally bow and just kind of like follow Heather. Right. She walks with you towards your room. You pass Victoria in the halls going the other way. Um, and I think you notice on her, because uh, she's wearing kind of like a loose fitting uh, gown for, for this event. Um, uh -huh. As she like walks past, you notice that there's like a little, like a, like a line of blood that's sort of bled through her her gown, almost like someone's got, you've got like a cut and a cloth is over it. And then like it, the cuts kind of bleeds through the scab or something. Mm. Um, you get the distinct impression that she has been, that she has received some sort of corporal punishment, probably a lashing of some sort um, for your mouthing off. Uh, Whether or not like she's responsible for it or like, you know, you're under her care and you've mouthed off. So she's like, what what exactly she's in trouble for? You're not sure, but it's probably tied to you. Right. Um, like that just causes like that kind of dark cloud kind of in his mind of like um, resentment and anger just kind of intensify. Right. Like you probably don't see a whole lot of change in Yaramir as he's just like formally walks by and is, is kind of head bowed following. But like, if you were to pay any close attention to him, his face probably tightens, right? Like you, you can just see just like a maybe gritted teeth, like anger kind of just seeping in. Um, even if it's just for a moment and he kind of regains that, like that, that doesn't sit well with Yaramir. Right. Uh, you get back to your room your cell. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you want to view it these days, but you get back to your fairly comfortable room and uh, the day drags on for a little bit longer. You probably get back in the late afternoon. Um, eventually okay. the crowds outside wear down until it's just quiet. Um... Is just like Heather standing guard in my no, room? She brought yeah. you into your room, shut the door. You could hear the turn of the key. Um, and then someone came later and like opened the door and brought you some food and took away your dishes, you know, and cl I brought, took out your chamber pot. And like, you know, they do their normal taking care of you like they would before. Uh -huh. um, but they keep locking you up every night or every time they're, they're done with you. For your um, safety, because there are people who would want to take you. Right, right. Um, I I kind of asked the last one, um, and, and I say, uh, will there be no night festival this year? I am used to attending with the with the high priestesses. The last person pauses and says, I don't know. I'm just here to learn and mm. train. I say, you know, on Mother's Day, we celebrate uh, a Mar union of uh, Martha and Luminous. Uh, usually, there is night festival blooms above temple. Uh, alchemists build them from foreign powders. Uh, when lit on fire, they explode in colors. Often she gives knows. hope to to people that see it. Uh, the union of life and light is powerful. Usually is in costume. I thought you would bring me mine by now. I will. I will do my best. Um, who who normally who 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 do I talk to to get the costume for you? Um, I think, and I say, uh, last I knew, uh, Victoria was head assistant to, Mo to Chancellor Angel, who I am sure is quite busy. Uh, perhaps you should talk to Victoria. She nods enthusiastically and uh, departs. Um, 
half an hour passes by uh, when you hear the turning of the lock and that same maid or servant or acolyte trainer their positions probably are probably an acolyte weird. right i acolyte assume that men are, are maids and servants but uh, a woman here is probably on the bottom rung of like learning kind right. of like let's let's make another game of thrones <laughs> reference probably like sam when he goes to be a maester right she's right. just like a low level priestess right like, exactly learn. acolyte's probably the best term for her yeah um, so the acolyte comes with victoria uh, unlocks the the door victoria comes in with your your typical costume um thanks the the acolyte and uh, shuts the door behind her leaving the two of you in a room together uh victoria makes eye contact with you and whispers quietly you know you're not going this year right i just nod um and i kind of like point to her arm and i said did they hurt you because of me she gives a shrug suffered worse injuries when when on my head i look at her like very straightly and i just say i cannot stay here i learned i am nothing more than a rat in a cage uh, i have not i must escape victoria Shh. i would like for you to come with me we'll go put this on she hands you your costume. Right. And I just like, put it on. <laughs> I whip it on. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last part of the costume is another collar that she puts on around your neck. Right. Um, and then the two of you step out. Uh, Victoria says to the acolyte that she'll be taking you down to the parade grounds. Um, and that uh, Chancellor Angel is swamped. So whenever she comes by or inquires, let her know what happened, but don't bother her with it. Right. Until then. Um, so the acolyte goes their way, and you and Victoria go your way. Uh, we need our Dark City track again. Here we go. Um, I think that uh, between Victoria and I, well, maybe not in this, in this timeline, maybe Victoria really just knows the temple best. Right, I've lived here my whole life, but maybe I don't know it as well as I as I would think I do. Right, like I haven't had a lot of freedom to explore it uh, and to like know how it goes. So I guess I'm kind of letting her take the lead, right? Because I feel like she probably knows. A, it's comfortable to let her take the lead. It's what I've done my whole life, right? Um, and it's B, not going to arouse any suspicion. Right, and B, like, I just, I guess I don't know the temple as well as I thought I would at this point. Right. Um, yeah. She leads you out the front entrance, a way that you could have found on your own, but she definitely, like, there are areas as you're walking through this where you're like, you know what? In my, like, 17 years here, I've never been through that door. I have no idea what's on the other side of that door. Right. Kind of thing. Um, but she, she leads you out the front entrance and kind of in the direction of the parade grounds before like hooking a sharp left down an alleyway where she takes off your collar and like gives you a veil to cover your face to hide your masculinity. Uh-huh. Um, and then makes for the front gate uh, of town. You guys find yourself on the western edge of the city, uh, which is pretty quiet right now. You can see the plumes of light off in the distance behind you over the palace temples right um i guess i guess like there's just a, a a tension in the air around yaramir right like he's just as tense probably as he's ever been um and like he's just got adrenaline going like crazy right like he's he's like hearing every like crunch of stone under their foot and every like cicada right like it just it's like <laughs> really he's like really on high alert and like he's got that adrenaline pumping at like a 12 on a like 12 out of 10 scale right you get to the front gates and there are guards on the gates as always the, the lieutenant in charge of the, the the western gate um cocks her head to the side as she sees the two of you approach and steps forward raising her hand and says you know uh, a, you know a short prayer to martha before saying what are you doing leaving? Um, Victoria says, uh, you know, I, 
am on a special mission for the Chancellor. We must meet up with the... Um, we are to, to meet up with a, uh, a, a wagon that has arriving late. It's bringing ceremonial foods for the feast later tonight, but it hasn't arrived. And the, the, the gate guard looks oddly and says, I believe all the wagons are accounted for. Um, goes back into her little office, pulls out a ledger and like flips through some pages and no, they, they've all come. Victoria says, well, they haven't and we need to go and meet them on the road. Um, how, how, um, how distinctive is my voice, right? Like I'm more heavily accented than most people. I probably have like a regional accent, like maybe in Utah, it's just this like very aggressively hard accent, like from the south of Matava or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, like, do the guards just, would they recognize my voice just like uh, like immediately? They might not recognize you as Yaromir. These guards would have no idea who you, I mean, they might know of you, but they wouldn't be able to tell who you are by your voice. Um, but they could tell that you are a male for certain. Uh, and I don't have a collar on and uh, you shouldn't speak. Okay, then I'm, I don't know. I get really nervous, right? Like I, I look a little agitated, but I'm, I'll just let, I'll let her speak. I don't know how much you can tell I'm agitated unless you like knew me well, cause I'm in a veil. Yeah, uh, you've got like robes and a veil. So you're like yeah. covered like, up. I guess, I guess maybe, maybe I just like start fiddling with my hands to myself is like, at, like I can tell this isn't going well, but I, I know enough to like, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I got 16 in, I, I know enough not to like land us in hotter water. Right. Um, the Lieutenant and Victoria stare each other down for a moment before the Lieutenant relents. Um, you, you know that Victoria technically outranks her. So mm -hmm. if Victoria says something, it's 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 what goes. Um, but you can see that the lieutenant is really uncomfortable with the situation. Right. Um, kind of orders the doors opened. And as you guys walk through, you hear her give a message to one of the other guards here, uh, like run, uh, take my horse, go to the, the palace, you know, inform Chancellor Angel of what has happened. Uh, get her clearance on this right away. And then the two of you are through the gates, which shut behind you. You find outside are a pair of horses being held by uh, a, a woman that you've never seen before. Um, you have no idea who she is, but she just hands the reins to you and Victoria. And Victoria looks back at you and says, can you, you can't ride, you don't know how to ride a horse, do you? I never have had time to learn. Um, she attaches a, a lead leech to your horse's reins and says, sit on there, and hold on. Um, <laughs> I, I, I nod my head and, and do that. I, I turn to this, this mysterious woman and I, I just, I thank her. I'm like, thank you very much uh, for your assistance. Please, I, I must know your name. Uh, she gives you a dirty, nasty, hateful look. Um, okay. and like, doesn't say anything and then looks to Victoria and says, are you sure you want to do this? Victoria gives a nod and then the two of you take off. Okay. Uh, I think later, much, much later, months later, you learn that is um, Victoria's younger sister. Mm. Um, okay. And the two of you leave Matava if we are to take a look at the world map here, um, it's a, a, a long journey out of here. Uh, it's 17, 18 miles as the crow flies to get out of the country, but that's a twisty ass road. So it's closer to like 40 miles, maybe 35 miles to get out. Uh, Victoria is a an able horsewoman. Um, she's trained in fighting ways as well. We probably uh, have to ride like all day and all night type of thing, right? We got to beat the the word of our escape to the yes. border. So you yeah. guys book it through the night uh, to the point that your horses are like unable to continue going. One of them maybe even collapses from exhaustion. Uh, and then you guys just take it on foot uh, as, as far as you can go, hopping on a wagon here or until like you're rested enough to keep uh, outpacing the ox cart. Uh-huh. Um, eventually you pass 
through this this little pass right here between Lookout Peak and the the ocean down to the south. Um, Lookout Peak is this mountain, maybe it's not quite even a mile high. It's maybe like four thousand feet, three thousand feet really, uh, and it's got a watchtower on it. It's the the way to guard the the western entrance to Matava. Uh, on uh -huh. top of the mountain, on top of this by this watchtower, are some of those like really big like Swiss Alp horns. So if they see something coming, they can like and like <laughs> echo through the valley. Um, nice. They they don't blow as you guys go through since you're you're on the way out. Um, and you leave Matava. Uh, no one comes after you, but it's probably because you beat them out there. But you know for certain you cannot go back. Right. Uh, if you were to return, you would probably be stuck in chains for the rest of your life. It would take a very something special to get you back there. Right. Um, I think, I think once we're probably, we got to go a few miles past the like actual border. <laughs> Just cause like, if you stop right on the border, like that's a problem. Um, yeah. But once we get kind of clear of, of Matava. I think Yarmir just kind of stops and like just takes off the veil and just like looks out at the at the stars, and uh, and he looks at Victoria and like maybe he just doesn't even say anything. He just like cries a little bit, but it's it's a happy cry. Like he's like, I'm free. We have we have so much we can do, and just like he realizes that that the, the part of his life that, that was so hard is, is probably over now mm -hmm. um, with, with more challenges to come for sure. But it's just like, like relief, right? He's had this tension and this, he's been sitting in a cell for days, just like meditating on how awful this is. He's, he had this incredibly perfunctory, like cold um, festival. He had this intense, like it didn't go badly. There weren't, there weren't swords drawn, but like just in terror, like just this like adrenaline, like he just like, it all washes out of him, right? This is this tension that's been building up for probably like a week and, or more. And he just, he just like the relief, mm -hmm. he just kind of like lets it go and realizes that like, we can make something of this. Yeah. I think you travel through East Vol Voden, which is this plain area down mm -hmm. here uh for a while not really having a, an exact destination in mind just making sure you keep heading northward at some point northwestern at yeah some point. vaguely you, northish yeah uh, maybe you travel like this for a little bit um eventually after i want to say a couple of months of exploring this new land which is totally foreign to both of you you know that you're learning this um the, these other accents these other ways of doing things. You encounter like men and women working together. You also encounter situations where like men are physically like assaulting women for disobeying them in the streets, which is like wildly different than anything you've ever seen. Um, and we don't, we're not gonna have to go into all of these little details, but you end up at this uh, little village, uh, kind of near Honey Reach uh, uh -huh. out in uh, Mistria. And as you're, you're resting and kind of trading some of your knowledge and some of the supplies you brought and what very little gold Victoria was able to pick up, uh, you run into this little shack on the outside of this village um, that has this quirky, weird dude that kind of looks like you. He's tall and slender, but instead of having like the, the really short hair that you've got, he's got huge, like long dreads that he's put together. And he wears these loose baggy pants and like he's got a shirt, that, like a button up shirt, but only like the bottom two buttons are buttoned and everything else is like <laughs> wide open. all the chest hair. <laughs> yeah, he's got like this big curly tuft of silver chest hair that sticks out. Um, yeah. He welcomes you into his little home, offers to put you up for a little while because he sees the tattoos on you and offers you a trade. If you will um, allow him to inspect your tattoos and examine you for a little while, he'll put you up for a few days and uh, kind of play host to you. And I think we're going to leave you with that decision. Is that something that Yaromir, after everything he's been through, is willing to do? Are you... Willing to let I, some stranger examine you again? I think it kind of comes down to Yarmir's very 
reticent of this, right? He, it's not something he wants to do, but like he looks to Victoria and just sees this like exhaustion, right? We've been wandering for months and we're low on gold and supplies and things. And, and he thinks, okay, right? Like we have the ability to leave when we want, right? I can put up with a little bit of this so that we can get rested and get on our feet. Like it's, it's one of those things like we can't keep going like we are for too much longer. Let's put up with this. Like I'll put up with this, this for now. And, and we'll, and, and, and we'll move on later. Like it, it just, it's so that we can get back on our feet a little bit. And I think that's the decision that like, it takes him a moment and he has to really think about it. Um, but he, he just, he arrives at this decision. He's like, Victoria, I think we need to, to rest here. I think it, it'll be best for all of us. Uh, when he hears you say that, the man who introduces himself as Egon uh, reaches into a pocket and pulls something out and like presses it into your hand. And you feel these like rectangular cold things press into it. Um, and he points to this large stone bowl, maybe three feet across, uh, maybe a foot high with a nice shallow dip in it that's resting on a little pedestal outside the hut. And he says, cast these stones into that pot. We'll see what your you, future will hold. Like, Yeremit gives him a strange look and looks at the stones, kind of gives him a, a, like, shake and just tosses them in. All right, the stones tumble into the pot and clatter around for a little bit. Uh, and Egon kind of breaks into a smile that then, like, goes a little uncomfortably and goes, oh, you're going to have a very interesting life, my friend. Come inside. I will fix you some food. You will need rest for what is to come. And I think this like doesn't even register to Yaramir is like an important thing, right? Like he just is like, well, this is a crazy old man. Hopefully that's all he asked me to do, right? Like internally, he's like, mm -hmm. thank God there's food. I wonder if it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. He feeds you some spicy food. It's delicious, like chicken Thai curry. So, nice, nice, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that's where we're going to leave our flashback for today. Uh, if you want to know what happens next, watch last week's flashback. Um, kind of. Kind, kind of. of. If you want to know what happens in seven or eight years, <laughs> watch <laughs> next week's flashback. Um, and uh, that's that for Frozen Frontier today. How do you think it went, Greg? Uh, I thought it went pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. I, I I enjoyed kind of uh, getting out of Matava. It was it was fun to it was fun to role play. I think last flashback was a lot more about Yarmir and a lot more about decision making, and I think this one was a lot more like what happened to Yarmir, right? I think that he was a, a much more of a spectator this time around, but mm -hmm. I think it was still really fun. I think it was it was. Uh, quite interesting yeah i'm pretty pleased with it uh yeah. next week we're gonna have another flashback i think it's gonna be not yaromir i think it's gonna be sean Someone else. <laughs> <laughs> that's right um one of our other cast members nick is out of town he's somewhere in the mediterranean i believe um and then we'll be back for a full frozen frontier session on the 17th of September, and then another full session the week after that. Um, so that's it for Rose Frontier. Tomorrow is the roleplay Pride of Vanderhorn one shot reunion show of the original Solemn cast. If you're interested in that sort of thing, it's on JP's channel. It's being announced all over the place. So you'll hear it. And uh, either today or tomorrow, you're also going to hear about the launch of a new show that I'm a part of called I've been calling Project T. Its full name will be released today or tomorrow. Um, and I will blast it all over the place when it shows up. Um, Greg, you're going to be doing some Diablo on your stream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, on my stream on Thursdays, my my brother and I are, are, he's teaching me to play Diablo. I'm a huge RPG guy, and the Diablo series just is never something I picked up. And I have kind of weirded out by it because I haven't gotten into it. So we, t we got Diablo 3, we're going to play together, and he's going to teach me the ins and outs of it and, and how it goes. Uh, we did the first one this last Thursday, and I thought it was pretty pretty rad. Uh, so come check that out. We're going to be playing Final Fantasy Tactics on Fridays starting next Friday. So we got some good Final games. Fantasy. I got some good games to play through. Um, I'm excited for it. 
That's the best Final Fantasy game ever. I love <laughs> tactics. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye bye.